student, say hi, tell us how your day is going. So we have some students uh, in the chat from UQTR, Philippe Dorion, a student in biochemistry. He's having a good day. And like Odona, uh, another student from UQTR in psychology. Okay, oh, do you know each other? Not same uh, department, but uh, same university. Interesting. So I'll uh, begin introducing Maggie. So to begin, thank you uh, for being with us today. We have a chance of being Maggie Leclerc, of having Maggie Leclerc uh, with us, uh, who created this presentation. We're really excited. The meeting will be mostly in French. So before we begin, I'll do a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that ECAPS is located on unceded indigenous land and that the Kenyan Keha Mohawk Nation is recognized as the custodians of the lands and waters which form Montreal today. The original name of this territory is Tiokiake. It is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations. Now I will introduce my colleague Maggie Leclerc, who is a Bachelor of Psychology student at the Université du Québec à Trois-Rivières and Mental Health Services Support Worker at ACIPS. The session was created in collaboration with Dr. Marie Pierre Gir Giroir, uh, who's also a psychologist and professor in the psychology department at UQTR. Thank you, Yannick. So hello, everyone. Thank you for being there today. So excited to do my presentation today. I hope you'll learn a lot. So we will talk about stress today, understanding stress for better prevention. So briefly, uh, as Yannick already introduced me, I'm a student in psychology. I prepared this with uh, Dr. Marie-Pierre gagnon Ginoir, who will join us later. Later, actually. So a little session outline uh, before we begin. So we'll start by seeing some definitions of stress, three of the most common definitions. Then the effects of stress on health. We know there's negative effects, but we'll discuss about whether there could be positive effects. And lastly, we'll give you tips and tricks to better manage your stress. So first of all, what is stress? What words come to mind when you think of stress? Great, so I'll uh, share the little cloud. So can everyone see on the screen? We have uh, fear, anxiety, that's there a lot. Uh, frustration, physical illness, uh, coping, cortisol, panic. Cine, yes, uh, we'll talk about the cine, meditation, unhappiness, insomnia. So it's not positive things that uh, come out, right? So we'll see over this session if we can change your perception a little bit. Um, there are three general ways to view stress. First is that stress is a stimulus. For example, I have three exams this week. That's stressful. So the exam is the stimulus. Then a stress is a response. So a tension, it can be reflected by my heart is pounding. I'm so stressed out. Then stress can be a process. For example, thinking I won't survive the semester, I'm too tired. So let's uh, see this more in depth. First, that stress is a stimulus. What this means, this approach defines stress as a stimulus that creates a stress response on an individual due to its lack of control, the unpredictability, the novelty, or that it's threatening uh, an individual's ego. 
So now, how can we overcome stress according to this approach? By deconstructing our stress so using the CINE method uh, that was uh, defined by Sonia Lupien, who's a pioneer on research on stress. So an example, you have an exam tomorrow, it causes you stress. So why? Let's deconstruct your stress to find out. So here we have the four characteristics that I've called control, unpredictability, novelty, and threatened ego. So the example with uh, the exam, is it because the control, lack of control makes it stressful? No, because uh, we don't feel like we don't have an ability to influence the situation because uh, it's more a factor of unpredictability. So something un unpredictable can make uh, things stressful because we don't know what will be in the exam, how it's going to go. However, if we study, uh, we can decrease this factor of unpredictability to lessen the level of anxiety. The novelty, no, it's not really novelty because an exam is usually about things we already uh, learned in a course. However, threatened ego, yes, because if I fill the exam, I feel like I'm not good enough and this can threaten ego. What's interesting with the CINE method uh, if you're someone who's often stressed, what you can do is make a little table like this. And when something stresses you out, you can identify the factors. And when you've identified many situations, you'll see that people have uh, one or two uh, categories where people are more vulnerable. For me, if it's unpredictability, if I know this, I'll use mechanisms, efforts to reduce unpredictability in life, to reduce my level of anxiety. Then stress is a response, tension, uh, the fight or flight model. Uh, we'll uh, talk about that. Stress is an adaptive response uh, by our body to our environment according to this uh, definition. When we perceive a, a stressful situation, the body sees us as something dangerous uh, to our survival. So it causes a reaction on our brain, um, which we call fight or flight. So a little example, but before I will show you here you see there's some gloves. So we have the adrenal glands here uh, that uh, liberate some hormones as a stress uh, response. And their goal is to displace non-essential systems because we want to survive. So we... Uh, overcome a stressful situation in order to survive. So let's take an example to better uh, understand this fight or flight uh, reaction. The one I have here is that during some of your vacation, you go hiking in the mountains. While you walk in the forest, oh, you come face to face uh, to a bear. You perceive this as a stressful situation and your brain understands that you're in danger. So you have two uh, choices, fight the bear or flight, go away. But whichever option you choose, you will need help from your body to overcome the situation. So what happens then? Your body gives you a boost. First of all, the heart rate increases. So that blood is directed to the muscles and the brain. These are just a few examples, but there are more. These are the most essential ones. Then your lungs, throat, and nostrils open to let in more air and speed up your breathing. Then your pupils also dilate to expand your vision. 
when we say that the body redirects energy to certain systems, what it means, the best example that I can say here, the non-essential systems, so reproductive system, digestive system, uh, so I, people have asked me, is that why you can be nauseous when you're stressed out? Yes, because the energy from the digestive system is redirected to more relevant systems for survival. However, these days it's rare that your stress uh, comes from a sudden encounter with a wild animal. Um, it's more due to interpersonal relationships, uh, financial stress or responsibilities uh, with your education, with school. So the problem here is that your brain can't make the difference between a situation that we think is stressful, like financial strain. They see it as the same thing as if we're faced with a wild animal and there's danger. So what can we do uh, here? So what can be dangerous is that your body can be in this prolonged state of reaction to stress. So for example, if your financial situation is causing you anxiety, it's not just for a day or two, it's a prolonged state and you'll be in a prolonged state of stress. Prolonged stress can uh, bring you to the general adaptation syndrome, which is in three phases. First, there's an alarm reaction. So there's not a lot of notes on my um, slides. I've created a longer one with more text uh, for participants that I can send you later. I just want you to concentrate now. But for those who are interested, I'll leave you my email address uh, at the end of the presentation and send you the one when more text. So the alarm reaction uh, at this uh, stage, the body is entirely mobilized to uh, face the stressor, resist it. So we talked about this, that energy is redirected to systems that are necessary for survival. Note that the body cannot maintain this state for very long. You can die within hours or days after a stress like this. So very elevated stress if you stay in this uh, state. Then there is the resistance uh, period. If the alarmed reaction continues, if the stress doesn't go down, the body adapts, but this is really bad for our health since all energy is focused on the strength uh, response. So we said some systems are slowed down to concentrate energy elsewhere. And this can create problems, which leads us to the last stage, which is exhaustion. This last stage occurs after prolonged exposure to stress. Our body's resistance to stress decreases and finally gives in. As staying alert, uh, this alert state, in the alarmed state, it costs our body dearly, what means that the immune system weakens and considerably reduces the body's energy reserves. So our resistance to other stressors and diseases is uh, therefore greatly reduced. One of the best uh, current examples I can talk about uh, is COVID-19. So with this general ad adaptation syndrome, the pandemic is an excellent example because for almost two years now, we've been living permanently in unknown and novelty, the characteristics that we've talked about. We don't have control on the situation. As far as I know, no one had lived such a pandemic. So two factors that aggravate our stress. And since it's a long, prolonged period, it can be a big source of stress. For those that are affected a lot by the pandemic, that it stressed them out, um, you are, I'll announce to you, in a general adaptation syndrome. Not everyone will feel the negative uh, effects, 
But if you've been affected in any way, you are in this state right now. So people who have not felt affected will not be in this syndrome. For example, I know someone who's very introverted. He wanted, they wanted to uh, work on a book project. For him, it was a great okay occasion uh, to, uh, you know, feel removed from society. He's working in his cottage, writing his book. So for him, he is not in this general adaptation syndrome. But in general, most people, uh, this is what happened to them. So now, how can we overcome stress according to this approach? So as a reminder that uh, we're in the stress as stimulus approach, so the stress response generates a certain amount of energy as we've seen. So to stop it, we need to channel it, to mobilize it into something else. So how do we do this? By involving the body. So for example, if you're ruminating in a situation that occurred at your school and this is stressing you out, your body sees it as threatening and you feel physically tense and anxious. So you're your hands are clammy, your heart is uh, beating fast, for example. But however, just taking a walk, brisk walk, uh, because you want to expend this energy, you don't have to go run, but a brisk walk outside will allow you to use the energy in a different way and decrease or even stop your stress or response. Another way of doing this uh, is by helping other people. So when you help uh, other people and you do good options, it activates uh, oxytocin, which is has a protective uh, uh, state over uh, stress. So question for you, what is, according to you, the best example of an activity that involves both the body and oxytocin to stop a stressed response? So no one is uh, trying? Oh, we have an answer. Yes, that's it. Indeed, sex, so sexual activity. So you don't think about it. So it involves the body and a proximity to another person. So it's a good way to decrease stress. Now we're at the last definition of stress as a process. So according to this model, stress is perceived. Considering that humans are actively interacting with their environment, they influence the impact of the stressor through behavioral, cognitive, and emotional strategies. So let's see this more in depth. But uh, look at this uh, image here. Uh, of this balance between two people, it will uh, help you with the definition. So when an indi individual is faced with a situation that is demanding physically or psychologically, if it requires uh, energy uh, on the physical, psychological level, they evaluate the resources that they have to deal with it. The more the individual perceives the gap between what the situation requires and what we think we have to overcome it, the more it'll be stressful for them. For example, to clarify, I have a stressful situation. To overcome it, I'll need this and this and this. But if the person thinks they don't, they're not confident, they don't think they can do it, It'll create uh, this stress. But if the person thinks that they have what it takes to overcome the situation, there will be less stress. So let's go back to the example where you have an upcoming exam tomorrow. And let's see with this approach how uh, it is reflected. So in red here, the obstacles that an individual might perceive in this situation. So for example, uh, of the exam tomorrow. 
So a person who thinks they don't have enough resources, I don't have enough time to study because I have a lot of uh, work this week, for example, uh, they have to study and they don't think they're good enough for, for this exam that's cognitive and emotional level. I feel that I won't be up to it. I'm too stupid to succeed. So an individual that has these thoughts will have this uh, divergence in their mind because they don't have the behavioral and cognitive emotional um, levels to surmount it. Uh, already had got good results and I know how to study and emotionally I don't, I don't think I will make it but it's normal to be nervous before an exam so so you see things in a better way for some people it can be difficult to know the difference between uh, behavior and cognitive resources cognitive resources are what you know already not to let the, your thoughts discourage you or see things differently. Uh, everything you can do before it's part of cognitive resources, uh, behavioral resources, what you know how to do, to do some sport, to be registered to yoga class, reach out for someone, have social activities. It's all part of behavioral. I hope it helped you to see the difference uh, how to overcome stress with this approach. So it, you have to increase your, your human resources with the, uh, we will see those things in, uh, further up. Now we'll have it some summary. So we have this stress, which is seen as a stimulus. So we had a table with the, the elements, the control, the unpredictability, novelty, and the threats. Uh, stress is an answer as tension. So we have to remember here that the, the so the energy is to, to directed toward the essential serve. Stress is a process. So so somebody thinks he has everything to overcome the situation, and the, the one who doesn't who thinks she doesn't have it. And it, to any, you know. now it's practice time. So uh, now I will do some context setting. So let's say you just had a car accident, identified a good stress to, to the good situation. So you have the car accident, you have physical and psychological symptoms of tension after a car accident, and the fear not to be able to face the situation after a car accident. So that's it. So can we put the stressors? The situation should link to it. We have an answer in the chat room. So fine, accident equals stimulus. Symptoms is, is, is an answer. The stress is an answer, it's called tension. And the, the stress is a process fine. That's so, so you understood things correctly. Thanks for entering. So uh, indeed. Uh, the accident is in, in, in the stimulus. The symptoms are physical. This is tension, and the fear not to be able to face the situation is a process. No, it's fine. So well, I, I plan the break. Be back. I will have a little survey. All you have to do is uh, is provide answers like yes or no. Just uh, uh, put. Mark, yes or no? The question is, do you believe that stress can be positive? You can answer yes or no. I'll share the results with you. So we have 89% who said yes, and, and we have 11 people who think it's not the case. So. So we'll have to check again after this session if I succeeded to convince you about it. And so we are the second part of what are the effects of stress on health? At the emotional level, we know that these are these are these emotions, the link with depression, the link with anxious trouble at the connective level. 
It is a hindrance to attention and memory. We're more distracted. It hinders uh, the, the decision making. Whether we're talking about ex excitement, we're talking about nervousness, uh, uh, hyper vigilance, and also the behavioral level. We know that there are problems linked with the activation of the nerve, sympathetic nervous system, insomnia, nightmares, relation problems. If, if I would tell you that everything was a matter of perceptions, so I will introduce three studies to try to convince you. So that's first, uh, if we would see that energy and, and changes related to stress rather than rather than as tools to face a challenge so so it's a, so that's a postdoctoral student at the, the berkeley he discovered that how the acute stress of so short-term stress where we're talking about the adaptations and strategy let's say we we're in a long-term stressing situation where we're talking here is short-term stress. And so yeah. let's see, as a matter of fact, Kirby and its colleagues used to rats and, 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 and the benefit and the minimum special effects were, were discovered if the, if the rats were making this, the same task two weeks after the test so they, they they had the small cognitive test and so it could be elaborates and things like that as a matter of fact so what's new there are new neur neurons in the, this who became functional two weeks after being generated which suggests an increase of the neuro neurogenesis in incurred by stress so it's important to remind that when you're in a stressful situation, short-term stressful situation, it can in improve your cognitive functions, mostly for the memory. So it's something very important to, rem to remind from that study. So we're, if we see the, that energy changes as a tool to face the, the challenge. So we believe that stress is a, is a, is a, is an hindrance to health when you interpret so if for example if we're stressed you have a heartbeat a wet hands and so on we see that as a negative thing so so, so for example that for blood pressure if we saw that energy and changes as tools to face the situation. When we change our mind towards stress, we modify the answer of the body towards stress. So it's quite interesting what the body can do and the mind too. And so, and so it's a, my, if I say that my stress will give me the tool to overcome the situation, but it affects your answer to stress. And during a normal answer to stress, uh, the heartbeat increases and what will happen yeah. so the blood vessels will contract themselves and which make the chronic stress dangerous by associating it to vascular disease a harvard study demonstrates that the blood vessels of people who saw the stress as useful were dilated so and impacted directly the risk of cardiovascular diseases simply so, so if I say my, my my body, what I feel, my body gives me the tools to face the situation, which is a challenge, but there has been no negative impact towards the vascular, cardiovascular elements. That's very interesting to know. I hope it will change your perception of stress. And so we're in the second study, it is, which I hope if the stress would help you to make friends. It looks a bit uh, bizarre. Let's we'll see if it's possible. At, at the end, of, as a matter of fact, the study was realized in 2012 by Freiburg, a scientist, who suggests that the stress can help us to make friends. This study, 72 male students were divided in, in two functions. One, a stress function, and control 
a function for the two, each group. And the function, stress function, the, you know, the students have to go across a test very similar to the, it's a bit different if they were in two groups. And, but they had this you know, social, uh, social stress test of Trev. They were matched with the partner, both with the students were divided in two groups. And it's a bit the beginning of the research to play a set of games based on trust, sharing and risk taking. So students in situation of stress presented more pro-social behaviors. So it shows that the stress triggers a, a behavior of just social approach. So and it provides the proofs of the assumption of towards trends and that friendship. So we are social beings. And we don't like to be alone. And in our, our behavior, we have an innate behavior that pushes us to be closer to others. So it's good for morals, it's good for our social relations that have a lot of good effects for both groups. Uh, well, there were a group at gains and another group which had stress factors on them. What's stressful? So we really put stress factors for the second group. We're in a stress team, but better perform and created links and and so on and on and on and on. Uh, after continuing our pituitary gland, an answer to stress was uh, give uh, oxytocin, same level of adrenaline when it's just released. It will give us a matter. So when we're talking about, that's part of the social behavior. So it will reinforce not only our social relations by increasing our empathy, but be, but it also protects the cardiovascular system and, and has an anti-inflammatory features. As our heart process small receptors, we have heart cells to regenerate by helping others so, uh, and uh, having a more complete I guess, social support. We, and our answer to stress is more healthy and we rec recuperate more easier. As a matter of the experience that I put there, so it was presented in TED Talk conference. The individuals who went through a major stress in, our, in their lives and perceived it as a challenge, as a difficult you know, financial difficulties or family conflicts, and uh, the risk of uh, immature death uh, by 30 percent but just the fact to help others diminish the risk of uh, mortality so that's quite crazy what the body can do so and then we have the last study leaving that stress is damageable for health is damage damageable for health in itself so the study i'm going to produce so I will tell them a bit more about the study. So, you know, 30% of 186 million adults, Americans, the stress were affecting them a lot or in some measure. So there's the reported stress and the perception that the stress at an incidence was associated with an accrued probability of health problems and mental health problems too. So we were talking about the negative effects of cell anxiety, depression, and so on. The amount of stress and the perception that the stress can affect health and more interacted. So for people who stated that they had a lot of stress and the stress had a lot of impact on their health, had an increased risk of 40% for a premature death. So stress can be negative. If that's your perception, it can really affect you negatively. So, the, and the perception that the, the percept, it can be associated with bad health and, and poor mental health. So, we'll, we'll see here that the uh, reported a large amount of stress presented an increased risk of 
Now, after you learned something from the three previous studies, can you believe that stress can be positive for your health? Fine. I'm happy to see that I, I succeeded to convince 100% of the participants. So as we saw in the previous, stress can be positive. I don't know for you, but uh, I was quite a bit surprised when I saw that study. But uh, I had always learned that stress can be harmful for her health, but just in the uh, perceiving that it can be uh, harmful for your cell, for your health, it can have a negative effect. Now I have uh, some summary. If we see that this energy into exchange related to sex, rather than as tools to face the stress, reinforce not only our social relations, but also protects our cardiovascular system. So it's easy to see that the stress is not damageable for your health. So that's something that. So we have uh, tips and tricks to better manage your stress. First, let's see the risk factors and the, and the factors for protection. So we have, we have the environmental factors and then social and economic context and the last. And so we have the psychic resources and, the behavior, and individual behaviors. So, so they could be replaced by cognitive or behaviors. It could be at the level or level personality within, our, within ourselves. What I show you here is a, it is a table of the uh, well, uh, World Health Organization. So we have uh, so the way it impacts uh, in a negative way. And so if it's a positive impact, so we have a low self-esteem and it will be a risk factor. If you have a, if you have a good uh, self-esteem, it could be a protection factor. So I don't know if you notice something, um, something we already uh, dealt with. As a matter of fact, it looks like a CINE technique where we can, can control the elements, features. If we have difficulties or school problems, as a student, we can increase it and improve the situation. But these are our characteristics, which are not easy to change. So, so among, uh, it's about the, the psychic, uh, psych, psychological resources that can make a difference. So you can develop your, your own resi resilience. You can develop your self-compassion and have a good life hygiene and use good uh, coping strategies. And remember, I said earlier that we get to it. So, yeah, I won't talk about uh, those techniques because as a matter of fact, you can check on the Honest and I Care site. I created a lot of resources to develop resilience, self-compassion, and the act techniques and the activities. I invite you to consult our site. It will be put online soon. So, so what are coping strategies? It is a set of cognitive and behavioral efforts aimed to master, reduce, or tolerate demand, internal demands or external, which threaten or over, overwhelm the resources of someone. So we all have strategies, more or less automatic, for, so, for some it is uh, control. It could be good techniques as much as we don't have on, only those techniques. I'll give you an example. Some people can cope their emotion about biting. So when we're talking about binge eating, these are uh, food disorders. So, so but eating is a coping technique to, with emotions. So if it's used once in a while, so, so you, eat, you have a big stress, you eat a bit of chocolate, it's fine, but you have to be careful. If it's all the same coping strategy, can become uh, could become a bit uh, negative. So, so a, a little survey again. I just want to ask: What do you think that you already use one of the coping strategies in your daily life? Which one? We have the emotional distraction problem where you can use coping strategies. So, 
interpreting. We got different answers. Fine. Twenty percent think that the seventy percent in distraction. Nobody for problems. Ten percent. Okay. So interesting. We'll look at it more, more detail. I already presented these uh, so for emotions distraction and the problem so let's see them one by one to better understand them so the goal of uh, emotionally oriented coping is first to reduce emotional tension by restructuring thoughts, engaging in positive emotions, venting to someone or in writing or in writing, distracting oneself. So if you call your friend, this is a coping strategy and maybe you use it without even real. So in an ideal world, uh, you see this thermometer of emotions. You would want to be with regulated emotions, neither too hot or too cold. So if you're in too intense, you'll have invasive stress. So you'll be impulsive and there's danger for uh, mental health but if you're in cold emotions you lose the adaptive and social function of emotions so you limit your emotions for example if i'm uh, mad with a colleague i don't talk to them i keep it for myself uh, i lose the uh, usefulness of this emotion uh, unpleasant emotion, which means something. Uh, it means I have an issue with this person, but if you keep it to yourself, feeling the emotion is useless because you can't use it to fix the situation. So also mindfulness and self-compassion um, is a great ways to regulate emotions. So for those who are struggling with this mindfulness and self-compassion is great. But mindfulness has two sides. It can generate stress when uh, someone who uh, wants to meditate, maybe they'll be really hard on themselves if they are struggling to reach a mindfulness state. So this can also cause stress. So it's up to you to see if you feel comfortable for it. The second uh, coping strategy is the one of, of uh, distraction, uh, which is used to not think about problems. So here's a study that was done during COVID, uh, an evaluation uh, in uh, general population, a trans uh, cross-sectional study. So, so these are all uh, coping strategy that were uh, used in this strategy, the, the study. So what I'm asking you is to take two, three minutes uh, to think about this, these six coping strategies that you uh, think are most often used. Mm -hmm. Yannick is saying TV, sleeping, gardening, social networks gardening I, I i love it too but i'm surprised to see that in the global population uh, during covid it's been one of the coping strategies so television again so we have here listening to music watching tv networking on social networks doing housework so cleaning and finishing stacked work which means if you've left things undone things you know you have to do but that you've been pushing for later so we've seen for example a lot of materials are there's shortages uh, wood for example because a lot of people are renovating uh, their homes. A lot of people were postponing it, uh, but did it during COVID. And then we have sleeping. Well, we have beside the techniques are little letters. So P means it's uh, oriented towards the uh, problem. E is for emotions. But as we see that most of these techniques are uh, with D, so distractions. 
So you can probably identify to many of them. The last coping strategy is the one uh, geared towards the problems. So you identify the problem, generate solutions, test the solutions, and evaluate results. Does this remind you of something that we've talked about earlier today? Does this ring a bell? I think it's uh, a lot like the Cine uh, technique. So when we identified uh, ways uh, to uh, our stress responses with the Cine technique, so it's here again. Uh, with this table, you can print it uh, and test it. You can have many copies. So identifying the problem is when you test many situations that make you vulnerable and then generate solutions. So if you know you're sensitive to what's unpredictable, so for example, if I have uh, meetings, I leave early, like today, for example, I connect early. I, uh, I, I could have connected early testing my um, survey. So that's what I did to reduce unpredictability to prepare for this meeting. And you test the solution, evaluate results. If it doesn't work, you just try new techniques. So this is a coping strategy directed towards the problem. So we remember three main types of coping strategies. So oriented towards emotions, distractions. Uh, uh, here we have TV, eating, sleeping, and the problem. So we talked about eating. Some coping strategies are, can be good, but if you're distracting yourself by sleeping, if you uh, if you're living through really hard emotion, yeah, that can help. But if you always use distraction as a coping strategy, you'll never be able to overcome a situation. So what I'd like to do is to share again a survey. Now that you know these uh, coping strategies better, are there some that you use in daily life, but you, that you didn't know that you were using. So thank you, eh? Thank you everyone for participating. It makes it more fun and interactive. So here are the results. So 11% uh, said none that you knew already that you were using these strategies. 33% for emotion and distraction, distraction and 22% for the problem coping strategies. So yeah, please use them if when they're well used, it can be positive. So we're at the end of the session already. So to go further, this is an image of Sonia Lupien. She invented the Cine technique. Uh, that we talked about, control and predictability, novelty, threatened ego. So here's her site, a lot of tools, a lot of information. She gives conferences. Thank you for listening. But before the question period, I have some questions for you. I'd like to hear your comments about what you found most interesting, if you stress in another light differently, are there subjects I should have talked about that you would have liked me to talk to about that I didn't talk about? And also I will take your questions. So uh, Maggie, it was really interesting. I, I took a few notes. I see Frank uh, raised his hand, but um, so seeing stress as something that could be helpful. I'm an athlete, and before matches, I feel really stressed out. Just the fact of thinking that I'll have to perform, uh, it gives me insomnia. So just perceiving stress in a different way. I, I I will try it. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Uh, let me know how it goes for you. Oh yeah, of course. So Frank, I think it'd be best if I did this in English. I hope you don't mind. Okay. Uh, I think it would um, be better if we got it in English. Uh, uh. Let me just turn the translation off, though, okay. because I'll be getting my words back after. Okay. Um, so, 
so just to to say it was a really great it was a really great workshop uh, Maggie, i appreciate it um and uh, one thing that i'm thinking about in terms of managing stress is the um is is looking at the things that you have to accomplish whether it's an exam or it's um some kind of a uh, event in your life that might cause stress and and tackling it in a way that's manageable. So like if it's an exam that you're studying for, instead of studying for the exam entirely the, the night before, deciding that you're going to start a couple of weeks before and do a little bit at a time. And, and when you, as you're going through that process, feeling like you can congratulate yourself on achieving something towards the end goal. If that makes sense. Because I think what happens with a lot of folks, including students, is that is they feel that they have um, so many things to do and they don't know where to start. So if you start at one thing and you do it in a manageable way, so it causes the least amount of stress, but you feel like you're gradually accomplishing things towards the completion of the goal. Well, I'm hearing that too. I don't know if you can provide a summary. So to need translation, you can always look in the interpretation tab. And if you need some translation, what Frank was saying that is that to reduce stress when somebody has an exam or a duty, the fact to begin in a manageable way, if you can allow it, begin task right away a few weeks before. Is it a way to reduce stress, if I understood correctly? No. Yes, it is. I can answer I'm not too good in English, but uh, so. Okay. As a matter of fact, yes. As we saw in the, the, the activity stage, we can diminish uh, unpredictability and control. By beginning right away, you reduce unpredictability. You know, I know you have started my work already. In, Okay. So, so it can be both to be able to reduce stress for performance anxiety. So there is a tendency to push for so, uh, uh, post from work there will be procrastination. So by beginning earlier. It will have to reduce stress. Uh, Philip uh, has uh, raised his hand, and uh, so let's see. I want to thank Maggie and the team that. Uh, okay. What new cine technique? Uh, so, so the reaction I have is uh, it's more. Uh, is it important for predictability? Uh, I could do that exercise. So, okay. So, it could be useful to recognize not to be in the same cycle, so to be able to take myself out of that cycle of cycle and use that, that CNA technique. Thank you for your comment. If I can allow myself to do it, so you're talking about you talked about coping. You said that uh, maybe it could be dangerous or negative at some level. At some point, we agree that uh, when we distract ourselves, I don't want to do my duty. I want to listen to TV. TV. So we don't make the choice in our, in our head. What I mean. We don't realize we make a choice, so that's distraction. So you understand what I mean? So, so, so there are coping strategies which are a bit automatic. So, at at some, at, say, uh, how much uh, can somebody could somebody say that it's too negative? At what uh, level or what point uh, could it be dangerous? To, could it be neg negative? So if you find out. Uh, uh, the coping strategy is, to, is negative 
when it doesn't have a function to reduce stress, but but so it had would have the kind of the opposite effect. Let's say that I uh, had a, a quarrel with my mate. I'm stressed. I don't feel good. I will have take the 30 minutes, look at TV, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Then that it's really a coping strategy to reduce my stress temporarily. So, so after that, in order to fix a situation, every time I, you know, I'm in a stressful situation, I use it. This coping as distraction, and and I don't I don't want to fix the problem later on. You know, I really use the distraction strategy to forget the problem. That's when it becomes negative and it hinders me to overcome my stress because I don't fix it. So I use this distraction, and when it interferes with between the fact that you overcome your stress, it could become a bit negative at that point. Does it answer your question? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any other participants who'd like to add something? Maggie, do you have something to say more? I prepared a few questions in case people would ask me if you're interested. I can uh, provide some answers. And there were some people who asked me, how can we develop our compassion, our self-compassion? How though do your auto compassion can reduce the stress? Auto -com uh, self compassion can generate positive emotions. So we, the fact to have positive thinking, it's like a process. So if I have the positive thinking, I can better assess the resources I have and to face the, the situation and reduce my stress. It's just the fact that self compassion, self compassion, is have to. Um, Kind of all the thoughts about yourself. I'm stressed now, but it's normal in the situation I am, and I have some difficulties. But I know that I can have what it takes to overcome it. If I don't make it right away, uh, I will make it somehow. It really helps to dim to reduce stress by because it increases your perception of your your own resources. But what could I? Uh, uh, I'm talking about resilience too. I don't know if you know about something about resilience. Listen, if you want to leave, uh, it's okay. But if you're interested, you can remain. And resilience is a many characteristics to overcome shocks or events that could be traumatizing. So you can develop resilience. And the best way to develop our own resilience. With, it's, uh, it's with social support. I didn't talk about it, but uh, yeah, I can give you tips that you can use. But in the, uh, the social support is a protection factor. It's the best protection factor. If you have a good uh, social network, strong supporting, it will help you a lot. So by uh, with positive emotions, it could uh, increase your resilience. I talked about it about self-compassion. So if you really have a good the social network, it can help you to increase your resilience. Also, it can, you know, it can also have a sense of the fact of, to see difficulties as part of life. It's somebody who's sick and will tell himself it's, it's in Jost and so that you, know, you might have and having closer to his, with uh, family, it could be a, a part of residence, be accompanied with the social network, professionals asking for help. It can increase your re resilience. I didn't talk about, uh, about the feeling of efficiency of personal skills, but it can reinforce that the feeling of personal competency. And do things that, that could that way that could, you could have a realistic uh, goal. So, do things that you could do easily when you were young. It could increase your feeling, uh, your self-esteem. If you're interested, as I told you earlier, you could look at the resources we'll provide and we'll display in our website. So it could help you. All right. Thank you. So this is the end. This is. Thank you to all the participants who were involved. 
I was, it was really relevant. I, I, I will keep some, uh, some advice and I will try to practice it. I'm not the only one. Thank you, Meg D. Thank you to all the participants. Follow us on our social networks for resources that uh, Maggie will develop. And then stay, stay tuned for the next developments of the CARES, and we'll have something soon. And we have other projects uh, on the table. Thank you very much, Maggie, again, and to all the participants. Thank you to CARES to allow me to provide some things. I have, hope I'll have the opportunity to soon to. I, I want to thank everybody who participated. Thanks, thank you for answering the survey. So it was a bit interactive, and thank you for participating. Thank you.